Welcome back to our city for the second half of this show. I'm joined by Battalion Chief Michael Matero of the Elizabeth Fire Department. Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mayor. So tell us a little bit about yourself first. Uh, you've gone up through the ranks in the Elizabeth Fire Department. You're an Elizabeth kid too, right? Went to school here? I am, I am. Uh, for those that know me, I'm Mike Matero, and uh, I attended our public school system here from uh, kindergarten at school 14 all the way to Elizabeth High School, graduating class of 1989. Uh, a few years later, I was fortunate enough to get on the Elizabeth Fire Department. I've been serving our city for about 19 years. Um, nine as a fireman, nine as a captain. I was promoted last year to the rank of battalion chief by yourself, and I'm currently assigned as an administrative battalion chief in charge of our Fire Prevention Bureau. So tell us about the Fire Prevention Bureau and what does it exactly do? Because not a lot of people really get it unless they have to interact with it. Uh, no problem. Um, Fire Prevention Bureau actually has a lot of multiple roles. We do a lot within the city. Uh, first and foremost, we try to provide the highest uh, level of fire safety for our community. And this is done through uh, the reduction of fire-related incidents. We do this primarily one of two ways, um, through inspections and also through education. Uh, inspections being that there are various rules and regulations both on a uh, municipal level and on a state level. And uh, along with those comes inspections. And this is where our inspectors go out, they make appointments, they meet with our property and our business owners. Uh, they do their uh, fire safety inspections. And then uh, we work towards compliance. Now there's state laws that govern all this, correct? They are. Yeah. They are. And uh, oftentimes the business community may conflict. <laughs> at times, at yeah. times. Uh, again, uh, our goal is compliance, and, uh, and along with that uh, comes a higher level of fire safety um, right. for everyone. So we do try hard to work uh, with all of our business owners, and for the most part, you know, we're doing great. So where is the Fire Prevention Bureau located? Fire Prevention Bureau is located at headquarters, uh, 411 Irvington Avenue, and that's on the corner of uh, Irvington and Prince, third floor, make a left and uh, you'll see us. So in the education part of the Fire Prevention Bureau, do you still go to schools? We do, we do. We uh, actually work extensively with the Board of Ed, um, and we do provide a service of fire safety education. We work with the Board of Ed. Uh, we work with uh, lots of uh, community and civic organizations. We work with various churches and religious organizations. Uh, we work with community organizers. As you know, uh, we have lots of festivals in Elizabeth, and uh, these are growing in their scale and scope. Uh, a few of these have over 100,000 uh, occupants. You know, a lot of our residents attend, so we try to uh, ensure that everybody has a fun and safe time. Um, so 10 years ago, Mike, when I had a fire in my house and my daughter was sleeping, I get her up, I pick her up, I bring her downstairs, I sit her on the island in our kitchen, and I says, Jacqueline, we have a fire in the house, we have to get out. And she says to me, Daddy, when do I stop, drop, and roll? So is that still a phrase that's taught? Because when she was four and five, she knew that phrase. Yes, it is. Uh, it is. And it's a good educational tool. And we try to uh, start with all our younger, uh, younger adults and all our younger ones in, uh, in the lower class levels. And uh, it's an educational tool that um, helps them to uh, stop, think about what's going on. We want them to drop to the ground and roll because that's the uh, quickest, most efficient way of smothering a fire that you may have on yourself or a piece of clothing. So I said to her, we don't need to do that now. We just need to get out. Correct, <laughs> which is good. Uh, <laughs> we didn't have, have to worry about that stage. But it was interesting that a four-year-old uh, who was obviously in preschool understood that. It is, and we do start at the younger levels. Uh, we feel that it's, it's real important, and uh, we f also feel that it provides a good base uh, for them to make good, positive decisions as they get older. Now, Mike, spring is here, and it's going to be time for outdoor cookouts, picnics, barbecues, uh, fire safety for these type of grills. Should, should people check them after sitting outside all winter? Is there a propane versus regular gas, charcoal? Tell us your thoughts. Sure. Um, as far as grills go in cooking, uh, that's primarily going to start now in the springtime. Uh, first and foremost, you know, check the grills, whether they be the charcoal or the uh, propane or natural gas. Make sure they're all in working order. Uh, we recommend that you don't keep those close to your home, garage, or any type of structure. Try to keep them about 15, 20 feet away. And um, when, you, you know, when you do pick an area for them, 
Uh, make sure that the area is clear of uh, leaves, papers, any type of combustibles. Um, for the gas and propane, make sure that all the plumbing is in working order. You know, make sure your shutoffs are working. Um, for the charcoal and uh, and the uh, wood briquettes, which are popular now, um, you know, make sure they're always attended. And uh, and when you're done, make sure they're fully extinguished. And if you can. Try to have an extinguisher, um, or at least a bucket of water, or something. You know what people often by. forget sometimes, because I've done this in the grill, is the, the plate underneath the gas grill that stores up all the grease. If you, when that thing gets lit, it it gets you know, you got to clean that out once in a while. You should. You should probably clean it out at least once a week, uh, right. so you can prevent a grease fire. Uh, yeah, because otherwise, that you know, outdoor grill, it's like you could, sure. Yeah, it's Absolutely. it's uh, summertime. While we don't have this issue in Elizabeth, but we have people in Elizabeth who go camping. Uh, building a fire, leaving it in, uh, what's, what's the rules before you go to sleep if you're out camping? Sure. Um, well, within the city limits here in Elizabeth, uh, any type of uh, burning of brush or any type of debris, we normally call open burning. Um, our residents really shouldn't be doing that. Uh, those are against city ordinances. Um, the new uh, backyard fireplaces or fire pits, which are becoming popular, uh, although they are legal. My neighbor has one. Although they are legal, you should check with uh, either us or the construction department. As oh, far geez, as I shouldn't have said that. I don't know if you checked. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, uh, is there a proper heights for that? I mean, what's what? Are there, it are all there, the, it all depends on the manufacturer. Sure, it depends okay. on the manufacturer, and then there'll be different rules and regulations for the installation of them and the use of them. Okay, so the the air conditionings in the warm weather. Um, are there safety tips for that even we should sure, be concerned with? Sure, absolutely. Um, warm weather will be upon us hopefully soon. And, um, <laughs> yeah, we keep saying that. We no longer have spring and fall. We just have winter and summer. But uh, I'm sure all the air conditioners will, uh, will be taken out. So uh, first, everyone should start off with uh, make sure it's, a, it's in proper working order and make sure it's secured for those that are going to use window units. Uh, make sure it's, you know, they're properly secured. Oh, because sometimes they fall out, right? That's correct. Uh, and after that, uh, we don't recommend extension cords or multiple outlets, so make sure uh, you have a proper outlet close by. And um, extension cords, don't use those, especially uh, underneath rugs or carpets, things of that nature. Are space bars important? I mean, the, those space sockets, or when you have five, six sockets on one, are they good or bad? Uh, it all depends on their use and how people use them. Uh, as far as air conditioners go, because they usually draw a little bit higher of a current, we don't normally recommend um, people, you know, plug it into those. You recommend it plugs it directly into a wall? Correct, yes. Because of the power surge? Right. That's necessary. Yeah. So, um, now smoke detector batteries. I've been hearing since I was a little kid that you always change them when the clocks change. Is that still the rule? That is the rule. I checked with our fire official, Chris <laughs> Lissy, and that is, uh, that is still what we are recommending our residents do. Absolutely. So every time the clocks change, people should change their batteries. Twice a year. Twice yeah. a year. And uh, fire carbon monoxide detectors, houses, apartments, uh, how important are carbon monoxide? Because you can't smell it, right? No, you can't. It's an, uh, it's an invisible odorless gas, um, and it's very important. Um, uh, are the number of calls we have now. Uh, in the fire service increases every year um, and uh, you know while that adds to the workload it's definitely a good thing because that means there's a lot going on within the city uh, you should have one on each floor or each level and uh, on the level where you have your kitchen you know try to keep a little bit of distance um, smoke detectors again common areas each floor and uh, definitely in the bedrooms and um, if you can um, a good idea would be a basement, you know, uh, attached garage, also a good idea. Because if, if the fire starts in an attached garage, the smoke alarm will alert you before it's fully engulfed. Correct. And Correct. Uh, so therefore it's important to have that. Yeah. Um, fire extinguishers for the home, are they something you should have, or even small ones? Yes, absolutely. If, uh, if you can, you should have one. It should be lo um, located somewhere uh, in the kitchen area. Uh, and basement would be a good idea too. Um, they're readily available at any uh, hardware store or home improvement center. And they just, so that the kind of contradicts the order that if there's a fire to get out though, <laughs> if you try to put it out yourself, right? 
A little bit. You're yeah. going to have to use some good judgment. Right. But uh, basically, if it's something that can be, if it's something small that can be confined, uh, something you know on top of a pan or you know something of that nature, fine. If not, we uh, absolutely recommend you get everybody you know out of the home or apartment to a safe area and give us a call. So, in teaching the kids, is it is it really educational for the fire? I mean, how much fun do you have? I guess is what I want to say. They 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 come up with some great questions, don't they? They do. They do. They uh, they come up with some interesting stuff. Um, the younger ones especially, but we do feel it's important. Um, we work extensively with the Board of Ed. Uh, as you know, the Board of Ed's a large entity, lots of schools. Well, they got 25,000 students, so. So yeah. uh, we try to accommodate them as best as possible. Yeah. That's good. Well, Mike, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us on the show this evening and talk about uh, national safety for Fire Week, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. For Vicki Rivera and Battalion Chief Michael Matera, I'm Chris Bolwage, and we'll see you next week on another edition of Our City.